Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes. Our writers pick their favorite Scorsese movies. Rosewood Hotel's exec. Describes what luxury travelers want. The arts in Paris are booming and trying to nip at London's heels. Hong Kong boxer Poon WBC title will lead to global recognition. Anonymous Chinese social media accounts hit by latest crackdown. Our writers pick their favorite Scorsese movies. The Guardian. In anticipation of Martin Scorsese's upcoming film Killers of the Flower Moon, Guardian writers have reflected on their favorite Scorsese films. Some of the top picks include Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, a rom-com that follows a middle-aged woman as she tries to fulfill her dream of becoming a lounge singer, Taxi Driver, a psychological drama about a Vietnam veteran who stalks the streets of New York, and The King of Comedy, a dark comedy that explores the dangerous relationship between celebrities and their fans. Other notable films mentioned include After Hours, Goodfellas, Cape Fear, The Departed, The Wolf of Wall Street, Public Speaking, Silence, and The Irishman. Scorsese's lack of female characters and his portrayal of women as wives or adornments has been a point of contention for feminist film lovers. However, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore stands out as a film that centers around a strong female character. Taxi Driver is celebrated for its portrayal of the psychological state of a troubled veteran. The King of Comedy is praised for its prescient insight into the derangement of American society. After Hours is described as a frantic and apocalyptic film that offers an evocative portrayal of New York City. Goodfellas is hailed as a masterpiece that critiques the corrupted American dream. Cape Fear is recognized for its sleek delivery of suspense. The Departed is praised for its dense plot and tension-filled action. The Wolf of Wall Street is celebrated for its depiction of toxic masculinity. Public speaking is commended for its spotlight on a singular New York character. Silence is hailed as a late-career masterpiece that explores spirituality. The Irishman is described as a film that takes viewers on a journey through the dark world of gangsters. Rosewood Hotel's exec Describes what luxury travelers want. Yahoo! The arts in Paris are booming and trying to nip at London's heels. Economist Paris is becoming a major player in the global art market challenging London for its position as the art hub of Europe. Auction houses and international galleries are increasingly choosing Paris over London, with Sotheby's holding 140% more auctions in Paris in 2017 than in 2013, while Christie's moved its Italian sale from London to Paris last year. Furthermore, French auction sales accounted for 54% of all art transactions by value within the EU, compared to just 7% for the UK. The growing interest in Paris is partly due to Brexit, with buyers and sellers of art increasingly inconvenienced by import duties and bureaucracy. However, Charles Stewart, Sotheby's CEO, believes that Paris's recent success is also due to the collision of luxury and culture, and luxury and art. Luxury goods firms have established art foundations in Paris, including the Foundation Louis Vuitton, which is currently exhibiting a multi-billion dollar retrospective of Mark Rothko's work. In addition, the French government is actively trying to preserve the country's appeal to art buyers. Hong Kong boxer Poon WBC title will lead to global recognition. South China Morning Post Hong Kong boxer Raymond Poon Kaiching will fight Wichit Sen Prakin of Thailand next week in a bid to reclaim the vacant WBC Asian Continental Light Flyweight title. Poon sees the fight as an opportunity to gauge himself against the best in the world and hopes to challenge a former world champion. Poon previously won and defended the WBC Continental Light Flyweight Belt in 2018, before losing it to Li Xiang of China in 2019. The 27-year-old wants to test his stamina and prove that he has improved since his defeat to Li. Anonymous Chinese social media accounts hit by latest crackdown. South China Morning Post 
Chinese social media platform Weibo is requiring users with a large following to disclose their real names, a move that has sparked concerns about privacy violations and increased online exposure. The new policy will mainly affect influencers who regularly post about politics, finance, and entertainment. Users with more than 1 million followers will need to comply by the end of October, while those with 500,000 to 1 million followers have until the end of the year. Weibo has started reaching out to influencers to inform them of the changes and ask for their consent. The move is part of a broader effort by the Chinese government to increase control over self-media, or accounts that publish news and information but are not affiliated with official media. Critics fear that the new rules will further suppress public expression on China's heavily restricted internet, while supporters argue that influencers should take more responsibility and be transparent about their identities. World Bank's bold new thinking on how to finance a better world. South China Morning Post. The head of the World Bank, Ajay Bunga, has outlined a new form of capitalism called institutional capitalism at the recent annual meetings of the IMF and World Bank. Bunga suggested that the massive hoard of global private savings, amounting to $70 trillion, could be used to finance critical objectives such as climate change alleviation and infrastructure building. He proposed that multilateral institutions like the World Bank guide private institutions towards development projects, beginning with renewable energy projects. This would require financial engineering but is more feasible than relying solely on private financial institutions to provide the necessary funds. Hahi sets new 50M mark at World Cup meet, McEwen makes backstroke history. South China Morning Post Australian swimmer Kaylee McEwen has set a new world record in the 50-meter backstroke, becoming the first woman to hold world records in all three backstroke disciplines. McEwen clocked a time of 26.86 seconds at the World Cup in Budapest, beating the previous record of 26.98 seconds set by China's Lu Xiang in 2018. Hong Kong's Siobhan Hahi also achieved a personal best, winning silver in the 50-meter freestyle with a time of 24.30 seconds. Sweden's Sarah Schoström took gold in 23.97 seconds. McEwen, Hahi, and Schoström are all considered favorites for the Paris Olympics next year. U.S. official says export curbs will impede China's chip progress. Bloomberg U.S. export controls on advanced chip-making equipment will hinder China's efforts to develop its own semiconductor industry, according to Under Secretary of Commerce for Industry and Security Alan Estevez. The measures, which restrict China's access to spare parts for existing machines, are designed to curb China's technological advancement. Estevez also expressed concern that China could use the advanced technology for military applications. The Biden administration recently unveiled additional export control measures to tighten China's access to advanced semiconductors and chip-making gear. Estevez acknowledged that his agency still needs to address the issue of Chinese firms using overseas cloud computing services to train their AI models. The books I helped rescue from China's repression. Wall Street Journal. A publisher in Hong Kong is facing the urgent task of finding a new home for thousands of books that are at risk of being destroyed due to their sensitive content. Bao Pu, the publisher, has been struggling to publish since the Chinese government violently suppressed protests in Hong Kong in 2019. Printers have been too afraid to touch his manuscripts, and after the passing of a draconian national security law in 2020, he had given up on publishing and was considering moving abroad. Now, warehouses where he and other publishers stored their books are demanding that they be cleared out or they will be pulped. Bao Pu reached out to a journalist and author, Ian Johnson, asking if he would take a shipment of the books and help find them a new home. Johnson agreed and received 380 banned books, including memoirs, political analyses, and forbidden histories. He quickly found research libraries and universities willing to take the books, but kept one set for himself. Johnson hopes that one day the books can be sent back to China, where they belong. Hong Kong Ingenuity Needed to Save West Kowloon Cultural District South China Morning Post 
The West Kowloon Cultural District in Hong Kong is struggling to establish a sustainable financial model. The chairman of the district's authority, Henry Tang Ying Yen, has suggested selling property rights to private developers to generate capital for future operations. Tang noted that no cultural district in the world is self financed. The West Kowloon Cultural District has faced numerous challenges since it was first conceived in 1996, including design competitions, CEO appointments, and delays. The author argues that the development needs the best minds in the industry to maximize its potential. The ultra-affordable EVs that won't be coming to the US anytime soon. Wall Street Journal The growth of mini-mobility, the use of tiny one- and two-passenger electric vehicles, is being driven by the falling cost and increasing power of electric motors and batteries. In Europe, companies are taking advantage of newly designated vehicle classes to produce electric vehicles of every weight and size, from two to four wheels. The Citron AMI, which retails for as little as $8,400 and is classified as a light quadricycle under EU rules, has become popular in France due to its low cost and compatibility with narrow streets. Other companies are offering full-fledged car alternatives that are faster and offer more protection to occupants. The Microlino, made in Turin, Italy, by Swiss company Micro, costs upward of $16,000, has a top speed of 55 miles per hour, and a range of 59 to 143 miles. However, analysts are skeptical that the U.S. market for mini-mobility vehicles will grow significantly as consumers in the country prefer larger vehicles. White American streets, built for speed at the expense of all else, are partly to blame for the trend, with many drivers feeling the need to buy larger vehicles to feel safe. Kaylee McEwen smashes world record, becoming undisputed backstroke queen. ABC Australian swimmer Kaylee McEwen has broken the 50-meter backstroke world record by 0.12 seconds becoming the second woman in history to dip under 27 seconds in a long course 50m pool. She beat the previous record set by China's Lu Xiang in 2018. McEwen now holds the world record in the 50m, 100m, and 200m backstroke in a 50m pool, making her the only swimmer, male or female, to hold the world record in all three distances for the same stroke. Although the 50m backstroke is not an Olympic event, McEwen is expected to win multiple medals in other backstroke events at the Paris Games. She also holds the 200m short course backstroke world record in a 25m pool. Will rolling back stamp duties put Hong Kong's property market back on track? South China Morning Post The Hong Kong government is expected to relax a series of property cooling measures that were introduced over the past decade in an attempt to revive the flagging property market. The measures, including stamp duties of up to 30%, were put in place to prevent speculative demand and curb rising home prices. However, they have had a detrimental effect on transaction volumes while failing to slow down price growth. The government has given hints that it is considering easing the measures, and industry insiders are hoping for a boost in the market. The measures have included stamp duties such as the Special Stamp Duty, SSD, Buyer Stamp Duty, BSD, and double stamp duty, DSD, which have increased the costs of property transactions. However, these measures have failed to significantly impact home prices, which have continued to rise due to low interest rates and supply and demand factors. Since the introduction of the cooling measures, transaction volumes have fallen, hitting an all-time low in 2022. Removing the measures is expected to boost the number of transactions but may not have a significant impact on home prices. Industry insiders are calling for the removal of the cooling measures to help boost demand and prop up the property market. However, analysts are warning that even if the measures are relaxed, property prices are unlikely to rebound immediately due to other negative factors in the market. The government has been urged to consider a range of factors and potential consequences if the measures do not achieve the desired results. China's property woes pour cold water over steps to boost stocks. Yahoo! Chinese stocks have suffered their worst week in a year as the real estate sector continues to worsen. 
Data showed the slump in property investment and the fastest fall in home prices in almost a year in September, despite a pickup in Q3 economic growth. The CSI 300 index fell more than 4% on Friday, erasing all the gains made during its reopening rally in late 2022. Russian tycoon claims he is behind Forbes purchase, audio tapes show. Washington Post. Magomed Muzov, a Kremlin-linked tycoon, allegedly claimed to have bought Forbes Media in a recording obtained by the Washington Post. In the tapes, Muzov reportedly said I just bought Global Forbes and stated American tech founder Austin Russell was the face of the deal. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, CFIUS, has been scrutinizing the deal and two Republican senators have called for Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen to review it. Muzov and Russell deny Muzov's involvement in the deal, but the Post's investigation raises questions about foreign investment and influence in the U.S. media company. As previously reported, Russell announced his $800 million bid to buy Forbes in May. The offer was seen as a surprise, as Russell is only 28 and Forbes was previously owned by the Forbes family until 2014 when it was purchased by Hong Kong-based Integrated Whale Media Investments, IWM. That deal fell through after concerns were raised over Chinese government influence, and the current deal is reportedly being led by Russell, rather than IWM. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your six-degree observer, the Six Doctor, here to bring you the latest news from around the world. Today, we have a diverse range of stories, from favorite Scorsese films to the future of luxury travel, art rivalry between Paris and London, a Hong Kong boxer's quest for global recognition, social media crackdown in China, World Bank's new thinking on financing, swimming world records, property market updates in Hong Kong and China, and a controversial claim about Forbes media ownership. So, buckle up and let's dive in. Starting with the world of cinema, The Guardian has compiled a list of favorite Martin Scorsese films, with classics like Taxi Driver and Goodfellas making the cut. But it's Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore that stands out for its strong female lead, a rarity in Scorsese's filmography. Moving on to the world of luxury travel, Rosewood Hotels is set to have a banner year in 2022, according to its president Radha Aurora. Luxury travelers are seeking immersive experiences and longer stays, with Hong Kong, Paris, and London being top destinations. In the art world, Paris is challenging London's status as the art hub of Europe, with auction houses and galleries increasingly choosing the French capital over London. This trend is partly attributed to Brexit and the collision of luxury and art in Paris. Meanwhile, Hong Kong boxer Raymond Poon Kaiching is aiming to reclaim the vacant WBC Asian Continental Light Flyweight title, which he sees as a stepping stone to global recognition. In China, social media platform Weibo is cracking down on influential users, requiring them to disclose their real names. Critics fear this move could further suppress public expression, while supporters argue for more transparency and responsibility from influencers. Shifting gears to the world of finance, the head of the World Bank, Ajay Bunga, proposes a new form of capitalism called institutional capitalism aiming to use global private savings to finance critical objectives like climate change alleviation. In the realm of sports, Australian swimmer Kaylee McEwen has broken the 50-meter backstroke world record, becoming the second woman in history to dip under 27 seconds in a long course 50M pool. And speaking of records, the Hong Kong property market is hoping for a revival as the government considers relaxing property cooling measures. However, analysts warn that the removal of these measures may not lead to an immediate rebound in prices. Moving on to China's property market, it's facing significant challenges, with falling prices and slumping investment. This has had a negative impact on Chinese stocks, which suffered their worst week in a year. Meanwhile, a Russian tycoon has claimed to have purchased Forbes Media, raising concerns about foreign investment and influence in the U.S. media landscape. Phew, that was quite a whirlwind tour of today's news. Now, let's dive into some analysis. In the world of cinema, it's clear that Martin Scorsese has left an indelible mark on the industry with his diverse range of films. While some criticize his lack of female representation, 
Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore stands out as a film that bucks the trend. In the world of luxury travel, it's interesting to see how immersive experiences and longer stays are becoming increasingly important to travelers. It seems people are looking for more than just a fancy hotel room, they want to truly immerse themselves in the culture and environment of their destination. In the art world, Paris is making a strong bid to challenge London's dominance. The collision of luxury and art in Paris, along with favorable Brexit-related factors, is drawing auction houses and galleries to the French capital. It will be intriguing to see how this rivalry plays out in the coming years. In the sports arena, Kaylee McKeon's record-breaking achievements are truly remarkable. She is cementing her status as a backstroke queen and is expected to be a force to be reckoned with at the Paris Olympics. In the finance world, the World Bank's new approach to financing critical objectives is certainly intriguing. It's a bold idea to tap into the massive private savings available globally, and it will be interesting to see how this concept develops. And finally, the property markets in Hong Kong and China are facing their own unique challenges. While easing cooling measures may boost transaction volumes, it may not have an immediate impact on prices. The property market is a complex beast, and it will take a combination of factors to stabilize and revitalize it. Now, my dear viewers, it's your turn to join the discussion. What are your thoughts on Scorsese's films? Have you had any memorable luxury travel experiences? Which city do you think will come out on top in the art rivalry between Paris and London? And what about the future of China's property market? I'm eager to hear your insights and answer any questions you may have. So, let's get the conversation rolling. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of six, do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.